Yesterday, we had a pretty furious row with James Cleverly, who's the chairman of the Conservative Party, about the Conservative Central Office press office manipulating an interview that was done on this programme with Keir Starmer from the Labour Party, suggesting that he didn't have an answer to a question about Labour's plan for Brexit, which actually wasn't true. It was a manipulated, edited video, and therefore classed as fake news. Now, the concern is, Liberal Democrats, you'd like to represent yourself as fine, upstanding people, but you are also this morning being accused of using fake news in your election material going out in certain constituencies. Um, let me just put one of the examples to you. Bath and Somerset. Liberal Democrat election leaflets in Bath and Somerset show you polling at 32%, just behind the Tories on 38% and way ahead of Labour on 8%. But the small print reveals, the question asks not who would you vote for, but... Imagine that the result in your constituency was expected to be very close between the Conservatives and Liberal Democrats and none of the other parties were competitive. In this scenario, which party would you vote for? And actually, the real figures, back in 2017, you got just over 11% of the vote. You are misrepresenting your chances of success. How do you answer? I'm sorry, did you say Bath? I, I missed the beginning. Bath and Somerset. In, in Bath, uh, yes, no, North's, in, well, in North's, Bath, we won the seat. Uh, I'm, uh, North's, I'm sorry. Oh, that... OK, so this is from North Somerset. Right, OK. I, I mean, I, I haven't seen the seat, and I'm not sure that North Somerset exists either. Anyway, um, I mean, clearly, there are... We, we have used polling, and we know best for Britain have used polling, uh, and one of the questions that is often asked is, which of the two parties would you vote for if you thought that they could win? Um, clearly, we need to make sure that that's absolutely unambiguously marked. It was there. You're saying it was in small print, and we would need to, to check that. But uh, um, certainly, we have been in contention in many, many more seats. And uh, there are play the polls best for Britain, independent from us, um, and obviously registered polls that, uh, like you govern others, can't speak for that specific seat. I obviously don't know those, those details. OK, but we, so let me, we put an, okay, sure. let me put another one hmm. to you, which is the leaflet distributed in Putney quoting that YouGov have the Liberal Democrats neck and neck with the Tories on 31%, with Labour trailing at 18%. This turns out not to be official data from YouGov, who said that they have not conducted a constituency poll of Putney. It was, in fact, data from a company called Flavable, which is not a member of the British Polling Council. In 2017, the Conservatives won with 52% of the vote, Labour gaining 32% and the Lib Dems just 11%. So, again, with that one, um, we have had um, a discussion with the person that wrote that and asked them to make sure they're very clear about making sure that the right uh, company is credited with that. And that was an error for which, you know, I apologise. Uh, but the fact is that the, there are certainly figures that show we are extremely close uh, to the Conservatives in contention in Putney. That's a big difference from 2017. But I think that reflects the change in politics over the last two years. One of, one of the things about this, though, and as you've, 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 you've stood and you said it was a mistake and you apologise for that, is, is voter trust. I mean, trust mm. between uh, MPs and uh, voters is at an all-time low because of what's been happening for the last few years. And yet it seems that all this information is coming out on all sides that is being manipulated for the purposes mm. of that party. How can voters trust what you're saying if moments after it's being, it's being distributed, it's being proved to be sort of interpreted wrongly? Why should they trust you? I think in this case, the, the, the way that we can remedy that is by apologising. This one was, was clearly an error because it, it credited the wrong polling company. But as I said before, in places like Putney, there are other polls independent of us that show we are absolutely the challengers to the Conservatives in Putney. London is very much a Remain city, and uh, people know that Labour is not a Remain party. Jeremy Corbyn confirmed yesterday mm -hmm. that actually his key priority is to make sure that there is a Brexit okay, deal. OK, so just going back to the first figures. You're absolutely right, because the uh, seat is not Bath and Somerset, but North East Somerset. And in fact, it's Jacob Rees-Mogg's seat. So the issue, as you say, is around trust and credibility. Mm. You must acknowledge you need to be absolutely, as we do, absolutely 
take that on board. As journalists, need to be absolutely accurate mm. about mm. the information that you're presenting. Do you think, just as we've seen the Tories slip up over this issue, do you think the Lib Dems have slipped up here? So no, no, I don't think I, I don't think so. And I think it was um, important that the uh, underneath had explained the question. I mean, that's transparency. We've explained exactly what happened. Most either political parties or independent polling companies ask a series of questions. And we have actually said what the question was. We're very clear and open and honest about that. And once again, it's one of those issues where there are many, many Remain voters in North East Somerset who want to be able to uh, choose a party that they know will support Remain and to ensure that we will stay in the EU. Mm. And voting Liberal Democrat is the best thing to do there. There's another incident as well. Um, some Lib, uh, Lib Dem leaflet claiming the Garden newspaper said Lib Dems winning and on the up after by-election victory, uh, when in fact this was a quoted edited version of the Guardian headline that the words originally came from Joe Swinson herself. They were quoting Joe Swinson and yet you've put it on your uh, leaflet saying it's the Guardian saying that. I mean, you can see the confusion for people. <laughs> Can't you? Mm. No, you're absolutely right. And again, I'm sorry that that was human error. When I heard about this yesterday, I asked our depart campaigns department to look into this, and somebody had cropped out the reference, and um, which was unfortunate. It was quoted in the Guardian, but you are right. It was uh, a quote from Joe uh, Joe Joe Swinson. So we have instructed people to make sure that they actually, when they're using a clip like that, that they credit it properly. Well, as Susanna said, because we all have to be so accurate mm -hmm. now and everyone's being held to account, your heart must drop <laughs> when you see something like this, knowing that you're going to have to come on the national media and make apologies for the campaign that has just started already. Uh, ab absolutely. But we are very, very clear that where we m make mistakes, we will hold our hands up. We've done that, and I apologise for both of those errors. Are you reviewing campaign literature now? We absolutely are. As a result of that, I sat down with, with our senior um, directors of campaign and worked, looked at this last night to make sure, first of all, that instructions go out to people to make sure that they get it right, uh, and secondly, to make sure that we are absolutely clear about what we're trying to say and who has said it. Absolutely. Um, you are announcing that you're uh, part now of the Remain Alliance, so 60 seats. Uh, you and I think Plaid Cymru and the Green Party, I'm mm. not sure if there are any other parties as well involved in that alliance, are going to decide that just one candidate uh, will stand and let the others go. I just want to... You have faced um, a, an issue, haven't you, over the fact that you've got Democrats in your name, but, of course, you want to stop Brexit, which just doesn't seem to be respecting the democratic decision back in 2016. And now you're limiting the choice of voters in 60 seats. You know, for instance, if I'm a green Brexiteer, you might take away my green candidate. You know, if in a... You decide applied Cymru uh, candidate should stand, but I don't want Welsh independence, you're taking away the choice to vote for somebody else there. How do you respond to that, limiting democracy? The reason that this election has been called is because for the last two and a half years since the last general election, um, the Conservative government under both Theresa May and Boris Johnson have been unable to deliver Brexit. And the main reason for that has been they haven't had a majority. And the reason for that is that the country is still absolutely divided on the issue of whether we should Brexit or whether we should remain in the EU. The Liberal Democrats and indeed Plaid Cymru and the Greens are very clear that it's in the best interests of the country to remain in the EU. And we want to give voters the choice to do that in 60 seats. And that's why we have uh, uh, come to an, an arrangement here. Um, it's an initiative where, for the first time, people talk about our democracy being broken. They talk about broken politics. We have parties coming together to work across party where we share a very specific But you um, say, thing. of course, that you want to give voters the choice. The trouble is, as people... Um, look back at the referendum in 2016. Voters were given a choice about a key issue. Now, you know, you historically, as a party, have wanted a referendum on the EU. Mm. So why would you give voters a choice and then say, once you've chosen, we're not going to respect that? 
Well, the thing about a general election is that it, if you get a majority, it provides a mandate. And in the event that there isn't one, then certainly we would continue to say, as we have said since almost the day after the referendum, that there should be a people's vote. But the key problem since the vote in 2016 is that there are so many different types of Brexit that there isn't a majority for Brexit as it stands at the moment. And that's one of the reasons that we're facing a general election now. But we do know that there are, um, in the referendum, there was a very, very large number, um, over 15 million, who wanted to vote for Remain. And we know that since then, many people who voted Leave have changed their minds as they've understood what sort of Brexit is being offered, particularly by Boris Johnson at the moment. That's why we want to maximise the number of Remain MPs so that we can stop Brexit, move on to building a stronger future for the country and get on to the urgent okay. matters and like school funding and yes. the NHS. Well, I mean, I think everybody would agree with you that, and for many people, those are the more important issues when mm. it comes to this uh, general election. There is a possibility that if there's another hung parliament, you as Lib Dems possibly could hold the balance of power. If that was the case, would you prop up either a Conservative or a Labour government? What I'm asking is, if I vote Lib Dem, and I'm not sure that on the polling, whether it's disputed or not, you could get a majority, but would I be voting for a Tory coalition or a Labour coalition? Well, I think you're looking at it the wrong way, because if this is an election principally about Brexit, could Liberal Democrats support Jeremy Corbyn? Joe Swinson has been very clear no, we couldn't, because Jeremy Corbyn is fighting for a Brexit. Could we support Boris Johnson? No, because his mandate he wants to get is also for a hard Brexit that so would really damage the country. So those are absolutely ruled out. No deals with not the Tories with or Labour. Corbyn or with Boris Johnson. OK, no. so not, it's not about the Tories or Labour. It would be about those specific leaders. Well, and, and therefore, the direction in which they are taking their parties, absolutely. But I have to say to you, one of the particularly interesting things has been the, the percentage polling, Labour um, going down again. You saw in the European election results, ourselves and the Conservatives and the Labour Party were all within a very few percentage points of each other. And that actually is changing the dynamics. It's no longer an issue of either the red tribe or the blue tribe. Mm -hmm. What we're looking for here is a completely different type of politics. Brexit we has, think the country... Is ripped ready for those it. tribal allegiances apart, Hasn't without a doubt. It Sal Brenton, absolutely. President of the Liberal Democrats, thanks very much indeed.